Ivan, the big stock and focus on the downside is Delta Corp. Uh, gaming and hospitality major Delta Corp posted a muted set of numbers. The Q3 margins were under pressure on the back of sluggish growth. It's the gaming and the hospitality segment that was under pressure. Also, online gaming continues to be under stress. Hardik Debar, the group CFO of Delta Corp, joins us now to talk about that. Hardik, good morning. Thanks for joining in. I want to first talk about online skill gaming, uh, which has been under pressure for a while. It continues to report an EBIT loss, the online business. Tell us, when do you see a turnaround? Will it be in this fiscal itself? Or would you know investors have to wait a bit far out, perhaps into FY24? Ardik, uh, we can't hear you. Sorry. Um, good yes, morning, Sonia. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let me just clarify that the online gaming business historically has been a profitable business. It's in the last couple of quarters that... Uh, because of the change of strategy and change of uh, focus that we have, uh, we have you know increased our marketing spends, increased our uh, advertising sales promotion activity because of which, uh, and the fact that uh, we are launch we have launched our multi gaming platform Adda Games, uh, which is the which I have always said is going to be the funnel for acquisition for uh, customers. Uh, uh, and it, it is the spend on these areas that is uh, being incurred now uh, in the last few quarters. That's why you are seeing the uh, uh, flattish or, you know, kind of break even sort of a situation. Otherwise, historically, if you go back in history, uh, you will see that the online gaming has been profitable. And if you okay. bifurcate and segregate the poker business from the Rummy and the multi gaming businesses today, poker mm -hmm. continues to enjoy. 27, 28 percent kind of EBITDA margins. Uh, what you are seeing is a blended version of all the gaming uh, coming together. Sure. So, I don't think it's it's uh, as bad as it is being made out to be. So, the question really is: since your spend has gone up, right? Marketing spends for Adda Games. Uh, can you tell us what is the uh, marketing spends as a contribution to sales? How much will it go up further? And in terms of a timeline, when do you think you could get back to profitability on the online side? I think uh, from a from a growth perspective, this is an investment phase, if I may say. Uh, and marketing and sales promotion on the online space is nothing but an investment that one does in terms of customer acquisition, in terms of uh, penetration, in terms of growth, and in terms of widening one's reach across uh, the country. And therefore, I think it's a couple of quarters before we start uh, seeing the results of uh, these investments. And I, I believe that in the next... Uh, maybe you know a couple of quarters maybe three four quarters uh, we should see kind of a steady state uh, 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 you know inching back towards the growth and profitability trajectory all right hi Ardik. Uh, good morning this is nigel on this side uh, so a couple of quarters before online gaming moves into profitability what about uh, the hospitality business so say by quarter one of fy24 both of them uh, get back into the green so, Nigel, uh, again, what you are seeing is, uh, you know, from a from a blended perspective, if you look at the hospitality business again, uh, post depreciation, it, it, at the operating level, uh, both the hotels that we operate are contributing and it is making money. It is only post depreciation that you are seeing uh, okay. these negative numbers, if at all. But otherwise, from from an operations perspective, uh, mm. before depreciation. Both the businesses are contributing and making positive returns. Uh, and just uh, since Sonia mentioned in the opening remark about the offline gaming, I think you know uh, the one needs to look at the numbers in a slightly different perspective. Uh, given the fact that uh, you're comparing it with December 21, when we were just starting operations uh, from the second wave of COVID, and you know our costs and our salaries and our operating costs were not fully back to the normal levels. And it's only from January 22 onwards that we ramped up our uh, employee strength back to the old pre-COVID levels and the operation mm. cost went back to pre-COVID levels. So I think comparing December 21 on a cost-to-cost -cost basis and saying that the margins are under pressure, I, I don't think that's the right way to look at it. Uh, if you look at September 22, uh, the quarter that has gone by, we've done about 270-odd crores on gaming and we've done 270 crores and on the gross basis, it's about 335 crores and we've maintained the 34% EBITDA margin, which is, I think, uh, you know, broadly... I think 
Yeah, you know, I think uh, you believe that these numbers are not so bad, but the stock market has given its verdict today. It believes that it was expecting more, actually. You know, because on a sequential basis, there's no revenue growth. They expected higher numbers is, uh, you know, is uh, the read through. But as you're saying that... Niger stock market is something which we do not have a control over. Right? Sure. It's a question of how people view and what the sentiments are. I personally believe that it's a strong reflection of the business. Second quarter has always been the best quarter, if you see historically from a Delta perspective. Third quarter yes. has never been better than the second quarter. It is always reflected and mirrored the second quarter. Uh, okay. You know, given uh, given that, I think we are we are on the right trajectory. I believe there are certain overhangs that are there on the stock, which all of us know. Uh, and we are hopeful that those overhangs are soon going to be, uh, you know, mm. kind of history. And we believe that uh, while we are continuing to perform from an operations perspective and doing what we do best and what we know best, I believe rest Sorry. for the markets. Uh, no, 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 that's a point. Uh, no, no, point taken. A point taken. Uh, you know, it's just that, I mean, Q3 is uh, also... Q2 is the best for you, as you said. Uh, Q3 also, uh, the expectations were it's going to be a good quarter. On that comparison point, while costs were not fully in, uh, Hardik, you would appreciate that, I mean, uh, the, on the revenue front also, uh, it was not, I mean, so in that sense, right, because uh, it was a low revenue quarter as well, costs were also not fully baked in, and both came back uh, in the in the quarter. So that why and why comparison point that you were making. But let's look ahead from here, Hardik. How are things going to be, in your uh, in your uh, opinion? Uh, give us some kind of uh, number, some kind of way to think about how your business is going to pan out over the next couple of quarters. Well, let's look at it from this quarter perspective, that this is the first time ever in the history of Delta we've made a cash profit of over 100 crores. Now, you know, uh, we have all been very fascinated by the top line growths and the uh, customer acquisition growths in various other businesses and other stories, and we've seen what have happened to those companies. We the, Here is a company which is generating cash, sitting on 700, 650 crores of cash. Uh, uh, and like I said, in the quarter, this is the first time ever we've crossed 110 crores of cash profit. Uh, and like I said, the traction and the trajectory is on the right path. Uh, the offline gaming business has done well uh, as as far as we are concerned. Uh, obviously, we are likely we are going to be adding capacity in the coming uh, very near future in the coming uh, new uh, in the new financial year. Uh, like we have already went uh, gone on record. Uh, so you know, with all the capacity addition, when we add capacity, a new product is brought into the market. We have always seen that there is disruption, I and then we see growth that happened sure. in 2013, 14 sure. when. Our current largest message was introduced. Uh, you know, I, I, no, I take, I take your point that, you know, I mean, a lot of work is being done from your end. But, you know, you were talking about some additional headwinds that the industry is facing, right? There are a lot of proposed guidelines from the Ministry of Electronics with respect respect to uh, more due diligence in terms of a better KYC. There's also a proposal for uh, registering online gaming with a self-regulatory body. Only those games will have been cleared by the body which are, which are allowed to legally operate in India, India. So all these regulations, once they're put in place, do you think it would uh, be a bit of a hindrance for your growth? Just trying to understand how it would affect the industry. We, we have always been ardent proponents and uh, supporters of regulation. And we believe this is only going to give uh, more clarity and a better status to the entire sector and entire business as a whole. Uh, we have been following the KYC norms even today. We have been doing all the things that are being asked. It's only yeah. that it is now being documented and we are being asked to follow in a certain manner and certain form and fashion. Uh, the self-regulatory body, uh, we already have a uh, kind of an organization called the All India Gaming Federation, which is putting out best practices and uh, rules and regulations that a good uh, operating company should be following. We are all abiding and adhering by it, and it's only going to further better and strengthen and it's a level playing field for everybody. Okay, all right, Hardik. Final question before we let uh, you go. As you said, trajectory and traction is moving in the right direction. Just two points I want to ask you. The online IPO, what is the timeline out there? Point number one. And any update on the Daman case hearing? Because that is going to be a big trigger out there. Uh, uh, your answer to both these two points. 
Daman case hearing, we are, uh, we are, uh, you know, we we just completed a merger of uh, Daman Hospitality with Delta Corp. So, you know, there is a little bit of a procedural thing required, wherein the the writ name needs to be changed from Daman Hospitality to Delta Corp. The formalities have gotten completed. Uh, so, uh, we were anticipating this week the case to be listed, but it will come up now, uh, hopefully next week. And now we have moved from the weekly board to the daily board, so we'll get a fair hearing. And I hope uh, justice will prevail and we, we uh, hope to get a fair chance uh, at uh, what we believe is a strong legal position that we are in. Uh, with regards to the IPO, uh, we have completed all the formalities. We, we had uh, done a, a bit of an in investor interaction as well. Uh, but I think giving a timeline is all depending on uh, the overall market situation. There is a lot of volatility and uncertainty. We'll wait for the right times and the other headwinds, like Sonia was saying, all these things to get clarified. And at an opportune time, uh, we will uh, assess the market and launch the issue for sure. Got it. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Hardik. Appreciate you joining in and uh, telling us all of that. Good luck. Uh, we'll speak again soon. Thank you. Uh, you know, the Nifty has moved up and uh, nicely. It's, it's a, a solid 40 points. Let's hope it holds now. 18, almost 18,100. We are at the day's highest point on the uh, Nifty. Uh, just a few other names which have uh, moved up. Uh, Max Financial is at uh, 825 now. It's uh, the top volume uh, gainer. It's up uh, 3%. Uh, RVNL, of course, was there. RCF is another one which is up uh, 3%. APL Apollo is up 3%, 1175. Hindustan Zinc, we had mentioned earlier. All cargo is up a full 5%. Actually, there is a fair bit of these smaller fertilizer names which are all uh, buzzing. Uh, so maybe we put the spotlight on those. But it's a, it's, it's a decent kind of move up after a flat open that we had. We'll take another quick break here. Dr. Naresh Trehan of Global Health will join us to talk about the key trends in the healthcare services space. Uh, of course, a bit of an uh, outlook on their respective business as well. Later, we connect with uh, Nissan Joseph of Metro Brands to discuss earnings which they reported. Stay with us. Go presented.